Good evening. Welcome to the Spiritual But Not Religious show. I'm your host, George Lewis. Uh, I've got a great guest tonight. Got a great guest uh, lined up for next week. Uh, but first, let me tell you a little bit about the Spiritual But Not Religious show. And I'd also like to talk to you a bit about the Spiritual Broadcasting Network and what that's all about and what our plans are. You know, one of the things that as a uh, spiritual but not religious person uh, that I was really affected by the fact that, you know, when we fill out a form, they ask you, uh, you know, are you a, uh, 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 you know, what your, what your religion is, what faith you are, and there was no space for people that, like myself, who was spiritual but not religious other than other and we really have no voice, and there's a huge, huge numbers of us out there in the world today who, who have a spiritual belief, who believe in a God, a higher power, the force, the universe, uh, the source, whatever you might want to call it, but who don't go to church. And so we have no real gathering place where we, uh, where, where we uh, are known. And, and so Spiritual Broadcasting Network's intent is to uh, be a, a voice for the spiritual but not religious community. And we're looking to bring you programming 24-7, uh, uh, internet television programming. The uh, Within two to three years, our, uh, everything that you see on your television screen will be being fed to that screen by the internet. And our plan is to be in position to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, we've got a couple of new shows that are coming online here very shortly. As a matter of fact, within the next couple of weeks, I'll be sending out announcements on that. And we've got several people that were in uh, negotiations with some really, really good shows, spiritual kind of shows that we'll bring you very shortly. My next week's guest is uh, uh, is going to be a, a super big contrast to tonight's guest. And tonight's guest is uh, exquisite, really a great guest. I've got uh, Joanna Mogul, who wrote a book called The Prodigal Family, A Spiritual Roadmap for Family Reconciliation. And there are just so many families out there that are, are, are broken up and uh, in pain and, and, and suffering difficulties. And her book is an excellent book to begin to heal those kinds of family wounds. My, my, my guest tonight is, is, uh, is has a very, very interesting name. Her, uh, she's Mary uh, Maria Alita, and she goes by the uh, name Spiritual Dominatrix. And <laughs> I tell you what, the people that I've mentioned that to, uh, I've gotten some, you know, some broad, different kind of remarks about about the name from, gosh, isn't that uh, kind of an oxymoron? How does spirituality and dominatrix fit together? And I think you'll. I think by the time we get done tonight, you'll you'll get a picture of just how they do dovetail and just how honest and forthright this uh, this lady is. She's a, she's just a super uh, coach. She bills herself as a as part life coach, part soul coach, part business coach, part spiritual teacher, part intuitive guru, part ins inspirational author, part Wonder Woman part kick you in the ass and tell it like it is truth trainer. And uh, before I introduce Maria, I want to I want to show you a couple of pictures here. This was Maria not long ago. And uh, there was a transformation at some point and and this is the Maria of today. And that's a huge contrast. Hey eh, Tommy, what do you think? What do you think? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk with Maria. We're gonna find out exactly uh, what caused that transformation. Matter of fact, what caused her needed to get her into the coaching uh, profession all altogether. I want to read you one of the things that sh that she says on her website, and this is really really important to uh, the name spiritual dominatrix in my mind. She says, "I demand you stop right now." Stop your moping, stop your excuses, stop your apologies for not living the life you really, really, really want to live. I've heard them all, and I've used them myself. I can boldly say that I was once the queen of procrastination and distraction. Well, I'm a Gemini. That's what we do. So let me get Maria on the phone. We've got Maria here, Tom. Yes, remember to push her on, please. Maria, I think I might have this. Let me get the volume set here. 
Yeah, there we go. And get Maria on screen for us. Maria, how are you this evening? Hi. Yeah, we're going to have to, it looks like we're going to have to do a little work with your, uh, with your volume. Let me see what I can do about getting you up. Uh, okay. Uh, hello again. Okay, we got a, we're a little bit better there. Can, how's the volume on you? It's time? a little bit better, yeah. But I, she's coming from Australia, so that's a long ways to go, I guess. Yeah, and you can check in the chat there. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll get on that right now. We do. Well, I've been looking forward to our... Oh, we lost her, Tom. Are you on uh, as far as the audio, Maria? I can, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, Just, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to re-invite you, and you'll need to... to uh, Tom will tell you... We want to get you back on. We don't. We've lost your she, video yeah, she, somewhere. Maria, you remember how to get back on? Just go right ahead and yeah. log back in. George will accept you, and we'll get you going again. Yeah, yeah, all good. Tom tells me you're one of our our sharper guests as far as the technology is concerned. You've been around this for a while. Yeah, I love it. I I can't have an, uh, enough technology in my life because I'm a Gemini. I love it. Well, you know, besides that, we couldn't do what we do without it, could we? Okay, I think, uh, yeah, we got you back. Let me get you over here positioned, right? Get her pushed on air, and you're all set to go. Good, good, yeah. All right, good, we got you. That's great. I wonder what, I don't know what's going on with that. but So I, I, I don't know if you watched the beginning, but I showed a picture of you, uh, bef I guess it was about the time for your, your book, The Miracle, and the kind of coach you were at that point. Then I showed a, a current picture. We keep losing her on the video for some reason or um, and I show, you know what, Maria, we may, because of the distance, we may be having a problem with the uh, internet somewhere along the line there, but we keep dropping you, so you may just be here with voice with us tonight. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I'll, I can try and get on a little bit later. This is good. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, it, you know, for our viewers' sake, it, what happens with it, with uh, the uh, guest video, it's in a picture, what's called a picture-in-picture, picture, and it doesn't actually... Uh, become a part of the archived version anyhow. So all you're going to see me it was me on the archived and you would see her on a live version uh, in itself. So at any rate, I've, I've, I've really spent a lot of time with uh, with your work, what, with your writings. I am totally in alignment with you. I, I like the things you say. I like what you do. And uh, I, was, I was surfing looking for uh, potential guests and you popped up the spiritual dominatrix and I told Tom, hey, listen, this we got to talk with this lady. So, Look. what got you? Tell us what got you. What you? What got you going? If I recall, you were at a place in your life where you were about to jump off a bridge. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's interesting, George. Though uh, the funniest thing that you've done is show those pictures. Yeah. Uh, of me before and, and me after. But the truth is, I'm actually both of those still, and I think. The, the whole term spiritual dominatrix, it came around because people were coming to me for spiritual coaching and they said, you know what, you're really, you're not light, you're not fluffy, you're not talking about angels, you're more like a spiritual dominatrix than you are an actual, you know, like a spiritual teacher. And it came out as a bit of a joke from the people who I was coaching. And then I sort of went, you know, I, I did marketing before I became this. And I thought, this is a good marketing brand. This is something good, not really done in spirituality. It's not done when we sort of put the shadow and the light together. Yes. And I thought, yeah, this is more of who I am. So I claim that name, through Dominatrix. And it is just amazing what's happening um, and, and the books that are coming out and the people that I'm coaching. It changed everything for you, didn't it? Pretty, pretty quickly. That you, you made that change just a few months ago, did you? Is that right? Yeah. Well, what happened was I had a, I had a couple of books out, and then the Naked Entrepreneur came out, and it was released in the states. Right. Um, late two thousand and eight, and in that book, uh, this is where the joke started. And in the book, it says, you know, uh, people see me more as, as a spiritual dominatrix than a, a psychic counselor, basically, and. From there, um, it was re <clears throat> it was re-released back in, in Australia on April 2009, and this thing just started happening. You know, everyone was saying, "Oh, you know, that that's Maria Alita. Oh, that's that spiritual dominatrix lady." <laughs> so that's where I and it was like, "Okay, well, this is I'll own this one. I'll claim this one. I'm, you know, I'm really into this spaces. I, you know, I feel 
really tell people the way it is and the truth. But I have a deep spiritual connection. Uh, I've had a miracle experience happen, happen to me in my life. So it really is, you know, everything to me, the spirituality part of it. Well, you know, I, I, I have been uh, working with people, uh, coaching people for the better part of 30 years. And what I've found is that it, it's really about the truth, because if you're not working with truth, you're really not doing anything anyhow. And, and, the, yeah. and the real job is getting people to hear and to listen. And some, some, some people hear the gentle way and some people need a two by four right across their forehead in order to be able to catch their attention. So that's exactly, that's exactly right, George. That is so right. And this is the thing that was happening. I sort of did it that way. I did it the light way and the fluffy way and I counsel people. But what I was seeing was they were coming more to me for psychic advice and not transforming their lives than they were coming to me for inspiration and life transformation. Right. And, and, and I was like, I'm not, I don't like this. You know, I don't like the fact that they're having a one-off session with me getting a reading per se more than a, co a coaching session. And I changed it. I just, a couple of years ago, I changed it. I stopped my business in that way. I just went, I'm not doing this anymore. I want to be with people who want to transform their life and want to stick around with me for, you know, a couple of months of coaching or a couple of years of coaching, not 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Well, you know, the thing that, I, that I've, I've seen, and this really hits to what you're talking about with uh, people wanting to come and get a, a reading for, you know, a psychic reading for five or ten minutes and, and just have everything clear up, is that, yeah. you know, basically we want the easier, softer way. We really want pixie dust, show me the magic, make it happen, but the idea of having to change and do some work comes pretty hard. It's not well, something... You would, I was going to say, you would know, George, that this is not a five-minute, you know, thing that we do. It's not a band-aid effect. We're not looking at our stuff for a day or a week at a time. We're looking at our stuff at a lifetime at a time. Absolutely. And is, you know, and I work at my stuff. I am, I, you know, I meditate every day. I read up spiritual scriptures every day. I'm around involved people. I do this work. And for me, it's like, you know, this whole, you know, before you're reading about, I demand that people now transform their lives. Now, in the age of technology, with what we know, with what we have on television, with the books that are available, people don't have excuse anymore for saying, oh, well, I just didn't know any better. No and, excuse and, and whatsoever. There's none. And, you know, I have been to that point where I have been rock bottom, and I call that in darkness. I call that space where, and I know I'm not the only one that's been there. I know many people have been there where I just didn't want to be here anymore, and from that, a miraculous experience happened. I had, my, I had my day there, so I, I really relate to you on that. Well, let, let's do this. Be, before we go into to, to some of what you, what you teach and what you, how you work with people, let's go back and let's talk about you know, where you came from, who you were. Give us a little brief idea of who you were as a child and bring us up to that point where you were ready to jump off that bridge so that people can relate to what you, you know, how you got here. That's great, George, because not many people ask me that question. Most people just say, what do you do now? And that's it. Right. So that's awesome. Now, now I was born into a family who were very um, poverty-stricken. We had no money. My dad was a, my dad was a gambler. Uh, I am one of six children. My father is uh, full Greek. My mother is Australian. And um, it was a very sort of, you know, hard, normal Greek sort of upbringing. Dad was very strong disciplinary. And we had no money. Dad was just gambling, bankrupt the family at one time. And so I had no, we had nothing, we had nothing. We lived at in a small house, uh, which I actually live across the road from where it was uh, at the moment, so I'm going back to my room. Uh, and we lived in this tiny broken down house with my grandmother and grandfather who owned the house. So there was eight people in a broken down little home, and that's how I grew up. Oh, wow. Uh, one, yeah, it was really... Um, Looking back on it, it was just normal. I didn't sort of think that we were the four kids who didn't wear shoes to school. And people, I just thought, that's good enough. And now, and then what happened was, my dad sort of got me back together um, after. Did he get in? Did he get it? Did he get into some kind of recovery, like Gamblers Anonymous or something like that, or just got it together? No, I mean, when I was about one, he was. You know, I found out later that he actually tried to end his wife too. He just couldn't handle the pressure anymore. Right. And then after that, um, he, you know, um, he, and he has his own story, as you know, everyone's got their own story. But what happened 
was, he sort of had an awakening. I think he was, uh, had maybe taken money from one of his other kids and was going down to the, you know, the TAB in Australia. And he said he just heard the word abuse. And he just didn't do it. You know, he just stopped doing it at that time and got himself um, sorted. So it wasn't like he went anywhere. He just stopped one day. Good for him. Uh, yeah. Um, and then he, um, one thing which was his passion, he was having health problems. He was working in the fertilizer plant to shift work to raise money for family. And that was one thing my dad was extremely good at, was raising money, but he just couldn't keep it. Right. So he could, you know, could do it. He was a great provider, but he just couldn't keep it. And then he just loved fishing, and he was getting sick um, from working at the fertilizer plant. So then he decided, you know what, I love fishing. And he and my uh, sorry, he and my mother and my big brother decided to open a seafood shop. And, and, and the kids, us younger ones, Worked in it on the weekends, and then from there, like taking you very quickly out of 20 years, right? The fish shop came into a family dynasty, and it went from being a little tiny, you know, trailer with selling fish to being this empire to the point it became a public company. And then that public company, well, the family was worth over a hundred million dollars. Oh, wow! And yeah, so and that was you know over 25 years, but sometimes you know, the you know, everything's organic. And maybe our family wasn't ready for the wealth. Um, that, that 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 company then collapsed. So I, you know, and and half the family were actually at near bankruptcy or bankrupt. So I've seen from poverty and having nothing, and I've seen and I've lived in extreme wealth, and then I've had nothing again. Now during that time when this whole family uh, seafood um, empire dynasty was evolving, I at the tender age of 16 met my husband. I uh, married. I was engaged at seventeen. I married him at eighteen. I had my first child at nineteen. Wow. Then two more, two more at twenty-one and twenty-three. I had the dream home of the mansion. Uh, I've actually put it on Facebook. To start the sale again. Uh, uh, when I was twenty-five, um, I had you know the mansion on acreage, luxury cars. I was married to a corporate man. My children went to private school. I had a holiday home on an island at in the Whit Sunday. And I, so I went from, again, extreme levels very, very quickly. Let me, let me stop you for just a second. I want to ask you yeah. just for one question. When you were living that, when you were in the middle of the, the wealth, were you happy? I thought I was happy until I sort of got to close to fat. I was going through my fat and return, and I suppose a lot of the spirituals would understand that. But right. when I was about 20, 28, 29, I started questioning the whole thing. Right. I really started questioning it because it was like I, I, I started hearing voices. I started and I had a dream um, that was so profound and made me cry for the day where I saw myself as being something else that I wasn't, that fit into that Mrs. Blah, 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 as I call her. Huh. Mrs. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, you know, because it was a blah, blah, blah life and everyone in that life is just blah, 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 look who I am. And it was sort of never really me. Um, but I didn't know I wasn't happy until the last couple of years I started questioning it and I got heavily involved in spirituality. And and that was the thing that I started going, hang on, this isn't really fulfilling that something inside of me that these spiritualists are talking about. Right. You know, I'm feeling empty and I don't know why and the worst part of that was I was feeling empty and then I was feeling guilty because the modern world told me when I had the husband, the kids, the stuff, the money and all that, I would be the happiest girl in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't work out that way, though, does it? Unless that spiritual part's there, it's like having a big hole in your gut with the wind blows through, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it feels um, so empty, but also, the way I sort of put it is, it's like swimming in sewage. You don't even, you don't even know it. It's like you're just swimming um, upstream in sewage because you're sort of like drowning in, in this space where you thought was all, you know, you know, nice and clean and lovely and beautiful, but it ends up feeling like that because none of the pretty stuff and none of the Louis Vuitton handbags and none of the twelve hundred dollars shoes mean anything at a at a certain point. Exactly. And you feel just like you're drowning in it. Well, you get to a place where the only thing that it seems will satisfy that desperate need is more, and then when more doesn't do it, it's pretty. I hit that point, and it was pretty frightening for me, to be honest with you. I thought. You know, wealth and fame was going to make me whole in some way, and I was going yeah. to be wonderful. When it when it when it didn't happen that way, it was like pretty shocking. No, and this is why I think a lot of the you know 
Hollywood starlets, uh, you know, and, um, you know, actors, you know, you find them, you know, wanting to commit suicide. Absolutely. You find them taking pills. And because people just go, why would that person do that? Because it actually brings up how disconnected you are from the spirit. It is the, it is one of the biggest eye-openers because when you reach the top, the pinnacle of what you were told was it's going to make you happy and there's no happiness there because you didn't bring spirit along the way, it is it is very confronting. I had a nervous breakdown. That's what happened to me. Uh-huh. You know, and all of, you know, so I turned 30. Um, my, I found out my husband was having an affair through via a text message on New Year's night at 12 o'clock on our holiday apartment, you know, in lavish, uh, you know, lavish draping. Here I find out my husband was having an affair. Was, was, um, this, and, was this the catalyst for your nervous breakdown or, or had you yes. already had a nervous breakdown going before that? What happened was for that whole year prior to that, I was having panic attacks. I was being crippled. I was feeling crippled. I couldn't, my feet started um, being crippled. I couldn't walk on my feet. I had to wear braces. My asthma was at its worst it had ever been. I was taking daddy steroids. Wow. Um, and um, I would say to my husband, who was blatantly lying to me, and my daddy was thinking of telling me something, but I was so devoted to the fairy tale, I was not going to let that, you know, be broken for any means, was that um, my gut instinct was at the point where if so wanted to tell me something was wrong, I was at the point, I said to my husband, I think I'm on the brink of a nervous breakdown and I don't know why. I was crying and emo- I was crying just emotionally all the time. I was suffering depression. I didn't know it. I right. didn't label it as that. I had enough stuff to hide from it because I could just go out and buy a new pair of shoes that would make me feel happy for half a day. But I, I cried more tears in that big mansion because it made me feel so hollow than I think I've cried in my life. Yeah, plus, plus the guilt that you were talking about that you feel because you think you should be so wonderful and you're not, and you, you just you know something's desperately wrong with you. Yeah, and you know what I think, George, is that not enough people are talking about this. Everyone's walking around. We hide it. It's great. Yeah, we hide it. We don't want anybody to see the, the dark part of us and, and that part that's really not functioning perfectly. Because what would happen if, you know, people who have supposedly made it, actually walked out and said, I feel empty, and this is not what it's cracked up to be, and really stood in that, and didn't go on and say, you know, well, yes, I'm wearing the, new, the newest, you know, Chanel, or I'm wearing the newest um, whatever, and then instead of it being, you know, hidden behind all that, what would happen to the world if many people came up and said, it is not, it is a lie, and it is actually not real. What is true is spirituality is the universal law. That is the only truth that is ever going to make you feel whole. Well, you know, the, the, the problem, at, at Maria, it seems is that built into this uh, this tremendous, you know, desire we have to... to uh, have all of these things and have the money and, and is the the real need to look good and and that need to look good keeps us from being able to tell the truth keeps us from being able to say hey this isn't what it's cracked up to be because part of the prize is looking good to your friends neighbors and everybody else in the world yeah but would it be interesting if everyone at one point just said you know i'm done with looking good for you i'm done with that and um you know what, I'm just going to be me and I don't need to have the bigger house and the bigger car and go into more debt to keep, you know, whatever that illusion going on, I'm done. And I think being able to say I'm done is very, very powerful. Well, it's very and powerful, yeah. It, it is, and that's what I did at 30 and I was done. And so the, the nervous breakdown happened because the husband left, left but it was, it was there probably about a year and a half. And I just hit it very, very well. I became an amazing actress. Not, not even my twin sister was aware of the nightly terror attacks that I would have. You know, no one was aware. I was like not giving up the fairy tale for anyone. So, and this is what happens to people. You know, if you want to be control free because you don't want to show everyone what's really going on, you know, this is where you'll end up. Absolutely. And, and like you say, that you know, one of the biggest things today that, that catches people who are in this kind of a box is pres- prescription drugs. That's one of the, oh that's huge. And also anything, not talked about. Uh, this is, uh, if there's anything that is my, you know, a byproduct 
of me being a spiritual dominatrix transforming people. It is me exposing what is the pharmaceutical companies at the moment. This pill popping pain relief for every symptom and everything that we have has got to stop. And I have made no apology for you know standing up in front of people to say this has got to stop. Absolutely. Prescribing a pill for something that is natural, you know, everything is cyclic. You would know that, George. Your listeners would know that. Everything has a cycle. Everything has an ebb and a flow. Everything has a season. So why wouldn't our emotions have a season? Have a season. My husband had left me. I've been with him my whole adult life. Why the heck would I cry for a year or two about that? Why would then someone label as depression and then have a pill to stop me from mourning the life that I had lived? Right. Why? You know, it is as natural. But you know what? We've become a very, very selfish society and we don't care about anyone else if it actually interferes with our day. Well, you know, know, you know, you know, Maria, that I think you hit on the, the what I believe is the crux of the, the, the difficulty for us and the creator of the darkness that, that you were talking about. And that is our selfish self-centeredness. Hooray for me into hell with you. As long as I've got what I need and I want, everything is fine. But that doesn't work at some point, does it? No, because, you know, in ancient civilizations, what happened if something, you know, someone was affected in the tribe? Everyone in that tribe would sit and gather with that person who was mourning or that person who was going through emotion, and they would gather, gather as a community. Right. What do we do now? It's like, screw you. I'll go to my next appointment. You just go and take a pill, get your stuff sorted out. When you're sorted out, I'll go and deal with it. Or hang on, I'm having an issue in my marriage. If you don't get a pill, I'll go and divorce you. I'll get someone else. Exactly. We have become a very egoic society. We are only connected, no, I'm saying on generalization. Yes. Um, that many of us are connected to what is, as you said before, what is the show, what is the book, because we don't give a damn seriously about other people. Well, you, you know, the, the, the thing, Maria, is like both you and I have had this uh, really dark, painful, difficult experience that caught our attention and turned us. And, and yeah. I, 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 I'm sure that you were a totally different person from who you are now. Same, but somehow or other transformed, just totally yeah. different. But, but, but how, you know, I th the problem is, maybe not the problem, but maybe this is, you know, like where the problem with drugs and alcohol and, and the huge things that are going on, maybe those things are here uh, and are necessary in order to help people uh, find their bottom, I guess if you might want to call it, or that yeah. dark place that flips them around. Because, it, it, you know, there, there are more of those kind of transformations than there are uh, seeing a white light and all of a sudden, boom, you know, like you've, you're transformed, it seems. Right. And, you know, someone who's living raw and meditating every day is the good. Again, it's part of the cycle. And yes. some of us have to go through that cycle. But where I sort of get, um, you know, empowered, healthy, is when it becomes an excuse for everything happening in their life that doesn't go their way. Right. So, um, you know, for instance, I'm coaching, and I do coach a lot of celebrities, and I coach um, executives, high-end executives, multi-millionaires. Uh -huh. And for for instance, what really makes me, you know, what gets me going is when they say, look at all these wonderful things that I've created. I'll be able to create a movie, or I've created a multi-million dollar company, or I drive a Ferrari, or I've got, you know, blah, blah, you know, I've got three girlfriends from the Playboy Mansion, or whatever. Right. But then, you know, but then they're like, come to me, it's like, because I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, I feel like I just can't handle this, and my mistress is giving me grief, and my kids are horrible. But they only want to claim the good stuff. You know, that, that, that stuff, and that I don't want to claim any of the other. Right. So I'm sort of, this is where I go, and, and they may be doing drugs, or they may be doing other things, but it's sort of like, you've got to, if you're going to do any of this work, the number one thing you have to claim is the good, the bad, the pretty, and the ugly. All of it. And our own. And I think that a lot of people who are doing the activities that are causing them grief, they're not really claiming it as a production of their own consciousness. No, no, they compartmentalize it, don't they? They put it off over here somewhere, and it's a whole part piece of them that doesn't count. Yeah, and, and I suppose what I say is, if after someone's told me the whole story, and occasionally they'll be waffling on about their story, and I'll just say, shut up. 
because I've heard enough of this story. Right. That's enough now. Enough now. I'm stop going because we can go on about, we can counsel people with their stories for another 20 years and counsel people with their past lives another 200 years. You know, we can keep counting that story. And mine is, well, well, hang on. That's just a story, but I don't care about that anymore. What's the energy behind the story? Right. Where's the energy? What is going on here? Is it, is, is your energy behind your life? Is everything I do is on energy level. Is it, is it, is it guilt ridden? Is this why you've created this story and that story and this story and that story and that story? Is it guilt ridden or is it shame ridden? Is it because what's going on here? I only want to know about the energy. I'm sick of hearing about the story. And because the, the only reason I do this, I'm not um, uncompassionate. I'm the most compassionate, empathetic person. But I just feel it's now time to go stop. Just, just stop with you, you know, repeating the same story and let's just look at, look at it for what it is. Look at the fact and let's now address it and action it. You know, action is a big thing that I think a lot of spiritualists, you know, say they do, but not necessarily do. Is that is that one of the benefits of uh, the name the spiritual dominatrix? Is that that you can you can give people kind of a preliminary idea of what they can expect from you that they're going to get the truth. Does that kind of make it easier for you to move into that part of what you do with people? Yeah. Well, what what it is, and I sort of put it this way: so love and light comes together with lock and load. And I'm doing you know a lot of speaking at masses, uh, mind body spirit festivals in Australia. And I would get up on stage and I would say, you know what, what I'm going to do over the next half an hour, I'm going to give you some, you know, love and light um, information, but it will be delivered lock and load. And everyone would just be like clapping and going, wow, I love that, love the whole lock and load thing. Right. Because they've, they've heard, they've heard and read about this forever. We keep hearing it and reading it and then we get another book and buy the next, you know, the latest thing that's out and, and we read and go, I know this stuff, I know this stuff, I know this stuff. Of course you know it because your soul knows it. So sure. what I'm addressing is when I'm really in this space, you know, that lock and load, I'm not talking to your soul. I'm talking to your ego. Because you, this is the thing that I'm, you know, having a, I'm staring it straight in the eye your ego because your ego is going to, your ego is a part of you that makes the excuses that keeps you in that, that keeps you locked in your daily pain. So, so let me, let me, let me just stop you there because the word ego, for, you know, can cause a lot of confusion. What I'm, what I'm hearing is you're talking about the false pride and ego, the arrogant part of us, and not the, the self-esteem type ego. Am I right? In other words, you're talking about the dark side of it. Well, I'm talking about the, the personality program right. that, keeps you, that keeps you embedded in your own drama. Right. That's the best way to put it. So, so if I'm not one of these spiritual teachers that believe we should destroy the ego. I believe the soul is smarter and wiser than the ego and needs it, you know, needs it on, on a level in this dimension. Sure. I, I, in this dimension, I don't ever believe, you know, get rid of it and let's just meditate in Tibet for the rest of our lives. I don't believe that's what we're here for. I well, believe we're here to learn lessons. Yeah, what I've found is you have to, like, take a look at all that darkness in it, but at some point you have to be able to put your arm around it and, and, and own it. It's part of you and, you know, just maybe move out of it, but it's still part and you need it. I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, I'm really big um, when you, when, and if you've heard me speak or if you've um, listened to anything that I do, I am always say, honor the good, the bad, the pretty and the ugly. You know, someone will say to me, oh, I'm having feelings of anger. What do I do to get rid of it? It's like, don't get rid of it. Honor it. And right. That, it's, it's, again, it's a cyclic emotion. Everything is a cycle. Everything. So am I going to say when the winter comes along, go away winter, I want summer? No. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. Know, same with, with anger. It comes up because there's a reason it's there. So now anger is channeled constructively with one degree of passion. Then, you know, when people learn to channel these things and then create masterpieces out of it and create transformation, it never ever will you see anger as bad anymore. Never will you see your fear as bad because everything comes up to be transmuted. So, so what I'm hearing you say is that uh, our our biggest issue is is uh, being victimized by our own feelings and emotions because we don't know how to deal with them appropriately or how to channel them. Is that is that right? Yeah, and then people believe they are their emotions. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? They, they, and this is the thing, especially when someone's suffering depression. Um, and, and I want to say, so even though I'm anti, you know, um, medication, yes. is that if there are people out there who are medicated, I'm not saying at all go off the medication. I am saying that there are amazing 
helping doctors out there who are holistic past as well as they have medical, who are actually putting people on holistic programs that actually coincide with medical. Yes. So I just, just want to make sure that that that's there. Um, but what I um, get people to do is start seeing that they're, what they're going through, their struggle, their drama, their control, their fear, is temporary. The problem, the biggest problem is being with someone who's had a nervous breakdown, rocket in the fetal position, being suicidal, jumping off, wanting to jump off the bridge, who's had depression. The biggest thing was in that, I thought it was permanent. I thought I could never get out of it. Right. And I didn't. That's very powerful. I, I, you know, I, I, I went, went online and I read your um, your little booklet there on on intuition. It's excellent. I really I really recommend anybody that's out there listening. They may want to they may want to take a look at that. But back in the back in I guess it was about 1984, I made a decision that that was what I was going to start following and stop following my head so much and follow the intuition, which which is really, for me, it's in the seat of my solar plex area, right in my gut. And yeah. uh, boy, I'll tell you what, the, 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 the path that I've, that I've taken has been uh, sometimes strange and sometimes you know unusual and, and, and so forth, but, but I have to believe that like you, it's been, it's, it's been the cause of my awakening and it's been the guide that's taken me away from the harmful places that my head would have taken me. Has that been kind of the yeah. case for you? Right. Into the not not necessarily heart space, but into an intuitive space. Yes. Because people get heart and emotion confused, and they go, "Oh, but my heart told me this," and it's not because they're not listening to the gut. Because the gut instinct is the intuitive intelligence that flows through every cell, every muscle, every vein, every bit of blood in your being. It is intuitive intelligence, and so that little uh, e-book, which you can download for free off my site. Right. Like, because everyone kept saying to me, you know, you're this intuitive guru, this is what you do. Um, how do I become more intuitive? So that's why I wrote that, that mini little book for people to understand this is not a gift. Psychic abilities are not a gift. No, everybody has them. It is as natural as breathing. And once you understand it's as natural as breathing, we're, you know, the saddest thing, though, George, is that in our schooling system, in our educational system, we are purposely not told about this. Well, they, they try and they try and stamp it out of us, you know. They yeah, yeah. Because, yeah they, they're like sort of teaching us to become mechanical, not intuitive. So if there was, a, you know, if there's a school that opens up, we're actually taught from the beginning to taught to refine our intuitive ability. My God, what would happen to the new kids coming up? We would have less fear because we would be getting yes and no signals from our body all the time. Well, you know, the 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 problem with that for society is that. Uh, we become less controllable when we're, you know, in that intuitive space, and and yeah. you know, and unfortunately, uh, a good part of, of 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 you know, like society and religions is about control. Yeah, yeah I get that, and it, like, and I can, that is something that I um, definitely, I suppose, explore and I go to, and I and I, you know, as much as I, I get, I dabble in the spirituality, I dabble in all of that as well. Right. I, one, I think it's in the front of my miracle book, and um, I'm sure it's in the front of that one. But I just have two, two words, question everything. Because when you become too complacent, when you become too comfortable, it's actually not a good place to be. That, that's just my belief, and I believe that it's that great to have ease and flow. I have a life that is ease and flow, that is miracle creating every day. I have an amazing life. But I'm not complacent and I'm not comfortable because I want, I question everything. I want to know why is, you know, why are the medical association now spinning at pills at an enormous rate? Who's, who's benefiting from that? Is it just the pharmaceutical company? Is it, you know, the politicians? Who is it? I want to know these things. I never want to be complacent. Well, you know, it all, life is as we know it. Unfortunately, society as we know it, whether it's in Australia or whether it's here in the States, is about show me the money. 
And if you want yeah. you want answers, it comes down to follow the money and just what you said. You know, what's the root cause of this? Why is this happening? And you find most of the time it's a, it's a, it's far and away from the picture put forward for us to take a look at. Yeah. So and too many of us are just numb to the uh, medium control of what's put out there. You know, too many of us are numb to whatever's on TV, whatever's on the magazine is true. And exactly. this is what I love. I love about the internet. I love about Facebook. I love about social media. I love about these sorts of shows. Is I can be 100% me, and you and I can talk about all of this, and there's no media controlling it. There's no hierarchy controlling what you and I are about to say. Absolutely. And we can, we can actually take our masks off and feel safe in doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I just would emphasize for people to, to start thinking that way. Yeah, I am going to question everything. You know, and you know, it's not about being in that logical part of the mind and then going crazy, you know, like a, you know, like a rabbit down the hole. Right. I'm just saying, you know what, is this true for me? And this is where the whole infinite intelligence is, and I am all for infinite intelligence. If I'm here to help people awaken to anything. It is about the infinite intelligence. It is about the intuitive intelligence that is running through everything. If we were all connected to the infinite intelligence and we were all more, you know, connected to the uh, intuitive intelligence in us, we would not have as many problems as we have today. Absolutely. You know what? Because people always say, you know, and people say to me, oh, no, I'm not psychic. I'm not intuitive. And all I have to say to them is, is there a time in your life where you just thought, you know what, I knew that was going to happen? I shouldn't have done that, I knew it. And I said, yeah, I do it all the time. Let yep. the infinite intelligence, let the infinite intelligence talking to you. Well, you know, the, 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 the biggest troubles I have is when I refuse to listen to that it, it, in, in things that are even simple. You know, sometimes it'll, you know, I'll be walking out the door and it'll be sun shining and this little, little thing in me says, well, take your umbrella. Uh, well, and I scoff it off. Well, I get soaked before I get home because I didn't pay attention to that part of me. And, and don't you love having the infinite intelligence uh, sort of play tricks on you like that? So it's sort of like, well, you're not even going to listen to us about taking the umbrella. Right. You know, and we've got a big project coming up for you. You know, we need to get you to do those little things to, to trust them more, to prepare you for the bigger stuff. Catch your and attention. Like, you got to get yeah. your, yes. So, and for me, uh, I, I say, uh, someone put it very well to me. They said, my intuition batting average is extremely high. I'm not saying that I get it right all the time because I'm here for the long run. I've got plenty to learn. I'm not, I never would say I'm an enlightened being. I don't, I don't really want to be. I just want to be here experiencing, you know, the good, the bad, pretty and ugly of life. Right. And, and embrace all of it. So, um, you know, I do know that my intuition um, batting average is higher than most people. But I do believe everyone can refine theirs even more and more. Well, that's I think, what that is great for. Yeah, I think our intuition uh, batting averages go up as we begin to own the fact that we are intuitive and start to really pay attention to it and to listen and actually follow it. Changes well, everything. I, well, look, I, I um, am writing a new book at the moment, and this book's called Manifesting Miracles with the, the um, University of Five Month South Awards. And one of the things that I really had, I started the book because I realized that there were three things that would happen to my own people. And the first thing that most of us would have is a bit of a tap, where spirit would tap us on the shoulder very lightly saying, hey, how are you going? You know, we may get a little bit of a headache, we may start seeing synchronicity or coincidence, and spirit sort of saying, you know, tap, 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 it's time to wake up. And then the second thing that would happen when you've denied the tap to spirit, because spirit doesn't want to always grab you by the hair, kicking and screaming. Right. You know, um, and spirit then sort of goes, okay, we, okay, guys, we've got to, you know, put it up a few notches. Then comes the, then comes the, um, the slap. So spirit's like slapping you around a bit. Huh. You know, you may lose, lose your partner, you may lose your job, you may have these, you know, incidences where you're thinking, oh, nothing's going right. Um, you might have those awakening moments where you went, I knew I shouldn't have done that, I did it, and your life started getting really flat. But those people, at that point, most people start exploring and waking up. But then there are the people like me who refuse to do that, even with all of this there, that I got the smack, you know, the smack them to the ground time of awakening. Where right. spirit does take you by, you know, you sound sounds like you're saying, where spirit takes you by the hair, kicking and screaming and says, it is time for you to wake up now. I don't have another second. I don't have another day. This is it. And this is what's going to happen. And we are not, you know, you, 
we can't wait for you anymore, so we get this match. Right. So I think that the more intuitive you become, and for people who are sharing this message like you and I now, we've gone to the smack, but what I'm trying to say is not everyone has to go there. I do believe spirit tries to get you a lot quicker than that. Not everyone has to be rocking in the fetal position, you know, with a doctor trying to put medications down their throat. Right. Well, you know, I've gotten to a, to a point where I've, I've realized that I, I, I can have a far less in the way of nose, you know, bloody noses and bruises just by paying a little attention and being willing to and being willing to listen like what you're talking about. You know, you and I could we could talk, I'm, I'm sure, for a good three or four hours and never touch on the on, on the same thing. I, but, be, but I want to I want to talk a little bit about what I would like to do is see our audience go away with some of the gifts that you have, you know, okay. some real stuff that they can use. And in your, in your book uh, that you and Troy Hazard co-authored, The Naked Entrepreneur, uh, you discuss five naked laws and how they work. How about just taking a little bit of time and going through each of those five so so that our, you know, our, our, our viewers can really have something they can sink their teeth into, something that can work yep. for them. Absolutely. You know, the greatest thing is, I, I believe that you know these tools are free. They're yes. Just free, you know, and I'm not selling a twenty-five thousand dollar program for you to come and, and join. The stuff that I teach is free because spirit is free. Right. Spirit, what spirit teaches you is free. So um, the the five naked laws. Well, they were five naked laws in the book, and they came around because you know the naked entrepreneur came around. But this is what I was teaching. And people, and I, I named that book. I came up with the title of that book. Right. And the reason being was people said, what are you going to, you know, Troy said the same, what are you going to call it? And I said, you know, it's really your story, but it showcases what I do for you. And he would just keep saying to me after every coaching that I do, he goes, just stop it. You know, huh. I feel like I've got my pants, I feel like I've got my pants down in the middle of the street. I can't get any more naked, you know? Right. Um, because I would just destroy and annihilate his belief systems about who he thought he was. You know, he thought he was the porch. He thought he was the 10 companies he had set up. He thought he was the millions. He thought he was the river house. And I would just annihilate that. So, you know, you're none of that. None of that. You're a very lonely, sad man who, who just really desperately wants to be in a relationship with a loving woman. You know, like, I would annihilate that. So, um, so people decided that it was all about getting naked. So this is where these laws came in because... The laws were for me, this is this is my life. I'm not teaching you something that I learned from, you know, when I was studying psychotherapy or racing. These are me. This is what I live. This is what I breathe. This is what I can talk to anyone about upside down on my head all day long. So you, what, what I'm hearing you say is that you, you work very hard at walking your talk. I, I am my talk. Absolutely. I am all, and I am all spirituality. And my people say to me, um, Oh, you, you know, you're so nice and you're so this and, you know, um, I thought that you'd be different, uh, you know, like, you know, some, must be that some people have, um, put out something and they see them differently and they think they're going to be something else. Right. So like, you're exactly like you are on Facebook or you're exactly like you are on TV and I'm like, because I don't turn this on or off for anyone. It, 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 it ebbs and flows through my, through, through my body. So yeah, because that, oh. that, that turning it on and off is the very thing that keeps us stuck and away from spirit and away from our yes. true... Yeah, absolutely. I'm right but, here. You know, and I, I was going to say, George, you know, and my reality is I'm a single mother with three children. I've been single for seven years. I had a solo mom for seven years, and I am living a real life, raising my kids on my own, writing books, and helping people. That is my life. That is all there is. This is it. My spirituality, my children, that's all there is. Yes. So, and, and that is the truth of who I am. So, um, and, you know, my kids are teenagers and they're the most important thing to me. And But uh, but alongside that, they know that uh, that their weird mother has this thing that she does. <laughs> and they don't even know what it is that I do. They go, you just, they, you know, they'll say at school, now what does your mum do? And they'll say that she writes books and helps people. Because they don't know how else to put it. Right. You know? My so my daughter my on. my children have the same problem with me. As a matter of fact, she just said the other day, "Well, what do I tell them that you do now, Dad?" You know? Yes. Yes. You know, and you know what? You're a spiritual illuminating. You're, you're here and you're illuminating spirituality to people who who you know are here to step into that space, and that's all we are. And 
I call people like us, and I'm not saying that I am any higher than or more than, and I'm not saying that, but I know my soul's journey, and I know people like us, I call us the ambassadors of truth. Sure. You know, we're on the, we're on the front line. We're out there. You're not just, you know, um, hiding, you know, somewhere and pretending we're just doing this. We're on the front line telling people what it is. And yes, there are people that say, you know, you're full of crap. This is just, this is ridiculous. You know, just go out and make more money. And then there are people like us that can say, you know what, I've already been there, done that. It is not, it is not the truth. And I'm just sharing you my message. Absolutely. So, ambassadors of truth unite. Um, so, I uh, guess yeah, so I will go through the five laws. Yes. And I know that we've got, we've got about 10 minutes. So, I'll go through. The first one is, you know, get your pens out, everyone, and write this down. Um, or you can just photocopy it out of the back of the name as well. But the first one is the law Maybe of time. tell you what we'll do. We'll get Tom to put these up on the chat room for yes. folks, too. Which which site? Are they on the site? <clears throat> or do I have to jot them down as she's speaking jot Australian? Jot them down as she's speaking. As she's speaking Australian. She'll tell you exactly what they are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go. Um, okay. So we'll, um, I'll, I'll, I might even send you a little bit more detail than what I've got. But the law of claims is all about claiming your life and this is, you know, the why I go in and I transform lives because as I said before, people go on about their story and their story and their story and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, stop. I don't want to hear any more blame. I don't want to hear any more story. If we're going to go with the good, the bad, pretty and ugly, let's claim all of it. Whether we've created it from a conscious level or a subconscious level or a soul level or an energetic level, let's claim all of it. Because people say, you know what, my husband died on me. I didn't do that. You know, like, and I have an amazing empathy. And I'm saying, but let's just claim all of it, the good, the bad, pretty, and ugly, knowing that on some dimension, we've created this. Absolutely. We may, we may not consciously go, this is what I want to happen, and there will be a tragedy. No way. But somewhere in our energy, we've claimed this. And also, sometimes something happens to someone else that's affected in our life that, you know, of course, they've, they've willed that somewhere in their consciousness as well. Okay? So that is really important, so I just make that statement. I am claiming my life, and if you find yourself gossiping, um, talking badly of people, or your experiences, and blame, 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 stop it. It's as simple as that, just stop it. You know? So no more of that. So the next is the Lord's surrender, and the Lord's surrender is about surrendering, surrendering your life and letting go of your soul. Letting go of the fear, the drama, the control. Surrender is all of who I am. My whole life is surrender. I am surrender. And the law of surrender is the ultimate universal law that, the, that, that there is. That's all I know. Uh, on the, the time that I went to jump off the bridge, that was, that was shown to me the law of surrender where I, everything changed. You know, I saw the world and the one that I saw that I am the miracle, you are the miracle, we are the miracle one. And I have surrendered my life. Right. So when people, when people are in that drama space, and, you know, so there are drama queens, there are divas, there are people <laughs> who are always in drama, and, you know, and I'm always like, if that's why I go, stop it, and, you know, shut up. So, um, but, you know, I just say, I, I, you know, this is what you do, is you grab a notebook or a journal, and you begin a surrender journal. And all you do every day, a page a day, this is more powerful than a gratitude journal. Because you need to start emptying the garbage in your mind and you need to start doing it regularly. So what you do is you start with I surrender and you just sit with your intuitive part of you and go, what does that mean surrender? I surrender the fear that I don't have any money. I surrender the drama surrounding my family. I surrender, you know, my emotions, you know, feeling like depressed. I surrender. And people say to me, well, Maria, who are you surrendering this to? And I just say, I don't care. Surrender it to huh. the intelligence. Surrender it to Surrender it to a rock, surrender it to Mother Earth, surrender it to a shoe. I don't care, but surrender it to anything other than you. Right. And know that when you surrender, that all of that stuff that you just floated out is temporary, you know, stuff that you've created anyway. And what you're doing is when, by saying I surrender and I hand this over to the universe and I surrender this, you're not saying, okay, I've surrendered the pain of blah. Now, God, tell me when it's going to stick. This is not how this works. You're going, I surrender the pain of blah, and I now just let go of the control. There's nothing more for me to do. And just allow the divine universe to bless you with the miracles that are around you every single moment of the day. 
I've had people uh, suggested to people in order to do what you're talking about, they have a little box and they just write it on, on you know, what you, the surrender on the box and dump it in there and, and the box is called a God box for some people. Yeah, I've got, I've got a God jar. Uh-huh. Like a God jar for me is more about manifestation. I don't use the God jar as about letting go. Uh-huh. I find the surrender journal is really powerful. If you have a small one, you put it in your bag. So if you're having a bad day at work, you know, run off to, you know, run off and have a coffee and you sit there and you start writing in your little journal and you start feeling a lot better and it's just dumping the garbage and you, and you are, you're surrendering it to God or whatever you want to do. Right. The big thing to surrender is there are some people and especially that American high-powered executive people, that motivational, in-your-face stuff all the time, which really pushes every button that I have. Right, because it makes that surrender almost impossible, doesn't it? Oh, surrender? Why are you telling me to give up? What's wrong with you? I'm not I'm not giving up for anyone. I stand up for my... Uh, and they go into that, and I said, no, 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 I never said give up. Yeah. I said surrender in strength. You see giving up as weak, but surrendering is the most powerful thing that you can do. And the reason that you're in, the rubbish that you're in, is because you are trying to do it all yourself, and you, and you see it as weak. It is the most powerful tool... And it is a universal war that that is there. You know, you know. I, I, I'll tell you what, Maria. Uh, we we have about four minutes to kind of uh, three minutes to kind of cram in these last three. So why don't you why don't you give us the last three and and I, I want to save just a little bit of time. I have a one last question for you. So maybe you can just. Okay. I'll just skim through them. That's okay. So the the third one is the law of illusion, and it's just basically saying that this dream that we're in is about the story. So you can create the most amazing story or you can create, you know, the worst story. So it's about people understanding I can create anything. Again, the good, the bad, the pretty, the ugly. Now, the fourth one is the law of intuition. Stop figuring life out and feel it out. The quickest way to get over that, to actually see that law, is go on my website. Go to the uh, book page and download it for free. So go to mariamita.com. Yes, download that, that intuition, intuition for free. That's the quickest way to get to that law. And number five is the law of synchronicity, which basically says nothing is on tip, nothing is by coincidence. Everything is, is with purpose, on purpose, and to be open to synchronicity, which really comes from being more intuitive and then understanding these five laws. So let's take, there's a, there's a couple, of, about a minute left here. Is You know, like, is there one thing that you could suggest to change someone's life, what would it be? Out of the, the one thing today would be begin the surrender journal. Just begin the surrender journal. It will cost you nothing. And you sit down, and what you do is you sit down with a blank piece of paper and you ask spirit to help you. And you say, I give up. I give up this drama. I give up this life that I thought that I lived. And you just start writing, I surrender over and over and over with everything. And let every emotion, let everything come up and let it pour out and hand it over to spirit. There is a spirit team waiting for you to do this right now. And so I'd like to just tell our viewers what they just got was what you charge celebrities uh, to help them with. It's a free tool. It's something that works. I, I really recommend that you, uh, that you take that up tonight and, and do exactly that. And take a spin over to Maria's website, MariaAlita.com. We got one minute left. I'm going to have to say goodbye, uh, Maria. I have just totally enjoyed you tonight. And and at some point, maybe we'll get a chance to get you back. I'd love to get a chance to meet you in person one day. And just good luck with everything you do. Thank you, George. I'll hopefully be in the States in September. So I'd love to see you there. Sounds great. I'll look look forward and we'll we'll see if we can't make that happen. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, Tom, that was a really great guest, huh? Awesome, awesome. Now, now, now I think, you know, for, for those of you out there who have questioned how spirituality and a spiritual dominatrix can possibly come together, I think you got an idea of how that works at this point. So we're going to, we got about a minute left here, and uh, I'd, I really appreciate your taking the time to come around and, and, and listen to and see our shows Come back next week. I've got a great guest. And in the meantime, don't forget to accentuate the positive and have a fantastic week.